This video is sponsored by Audible, and while this might be a Titanfall video, for all of my Warhammer fans, I have a very good recommendation for you. A lot of you already know this, but I am on a Warhammer podcast known as Adeptus Ridiculous, which is a great way to learn about Warhammer lore from a much more casual, comedic, and simple perspective, or for somebody new getting into it. We are actually doing a book club very soon, and the audiobook that we recommended and are going to be discussing is known as The Infinite and the Divine, the story of Trays in the Infinite and Auric and the Diviner having a 10,000-year-long spy versus spy style nerd fight. It is exciting, it is extremely funny, surprisingly, and it is arguably one of the best Necron books ever written and a top five Warhammer books in general, and both of us have been listening to it on Audible. I truly think that Audible is the best way to experience the infinite and the divine. The narrator does an absolutely fantastic job bringing such an amount of life to both Trazim and Orakim. The thick Egyptian accent he has is not only stellar, but his ability to swap it on the fly to the Cockney orcs or the, the very heavy British humans is just, it's masterful. It is probably my favorite audiobook I have ever listened to. It's one of the best Warhammer books I've ever read. And thanks to my sponsor today, Audible, you can go ahead and check it out in the description. Go ahead and visit audible.com slash bricky or text bricky to 500-500. And if you'd like to check out the Adeptus Ridiculous podcast when we talk about that book in early June, please do. Thank you very much for the sponsor, Audible, and let's talk about Titanfall. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently running from the law for being over Gen 10 and still using the car. Disgusting. And if you're a fan of the overall Titanfall universe that includes Apex, today's a pretty damn good month for you. It's also a pretty great month if you watch my videos, I guess, because we had the Every Legend Explained video earlier in the month. We now have a Titanfall Titan tier list today, and then we're doing the second part of it later on this month. The month of May is dedicated to Titanfall and the Titanfall universe, or I just call it the Frontier universe because it's a little bit easier to explain. But today, I bring you a Titanfall tier list on weapons. Weapons? No. On equipment? No. On anti-Titan weapons? No. None of that kind of stuff. On Titans? Absolutely. If you're curious about my tier list and all those other weapons, here, here it is. Here it is. If you want to hear me and my reasonings for making this tier list, you can go ahead and check it out on the second channel, link in the description. But I didn't want to talk about that stuff today for this video. I want to talk about the main like selling point of Titanfall, which are the Titans, of course. Titanfall 2's player count has been going up, up, up as of recently. The free weekend was, of course, a huge deal, but more people have bought it since then, and therefore more people are playing the game. So a lot of you, what some of you may be new, some of you returning, are curious which Titan, you know, the main selling point, should I use. Titans, of course, are the big boys, and the big boys are probably one of the major decisions you have to make when you create your class. So this video is operating on two different wavelengths. One, it's a Titan tier list. I'll go through which ones are the worst and which ones are the best and my reasons why. But also, secondly, what it is to play those Titans. What is their play style like? What are the people who play them like? And overall, what's the gist of it? How is North Star compared to Legion? And how is Scorch compared to Ronin? How do these Titans play? And how how hard are they? How good are they? And where's their skill ceiling and floor at? So with that being said, let's go from bottom to top with, I really regret to say, our big daddy Scorch. The fucking boss is fucking Welcome to the kitchen, baby! Today we're cooking scrubs! Scorch fluctuates from A to D tier entirely depending on the map because Scorch being the largest chassis titan, the Atlas chassis, no. The Ogre chassis, along with Legion, means he has the most health, but he's also the slowest. However, unlike Legion, Scorch is all about getting up in your face and burning you close range with tons of different kinds of fire. The thing about Scorch is that he's also denial, he's manipulation, he's control. So you get some maps, like say Crash Site and a couple other really small maps where Scorch will just excel. Because the way you play Scorch is to take a person and force them into a corner and just burn them right in the face with a heat shield fire beneath their feet, easily manipulate and force the enemy to move in the way that you want them to. Let me make this clear. Scorch is in the C tier, but there is no bad Titan in Titanfall. Technically, there are counters and there are better and worse maps for them. But the reason Scorch is so far down there is that can he do a lot of damage? Absolutely. Can he dumpster some titans? Sure, 100%. Does he have to try the hardest to do it? 
I would say so. Scourge is a titan that doesn't rely on aiming in an FPS game. Scourge is a titan that relies on choke points and forcing people into corners because when you can do that properly, the health bars shred. I don't think I know of a single titan with the exception of a core that can kill another titan faster than Scourge can. He has easily the highest ceiling for DPS output, but the stars need to align for it to honestly work. The potential of Scorch is enormous. Many a times I've been playing Legion and had a Scorch run up to my face and I knew for a fact I'm doomed. There is nothing I can do about this Scorch in my face because I'm big, fat, and slow. Whereas the other times that are a lot faster have way more ways to deal with you because you're in a shooter game. And there are a lot of Titans that are shooter Titans. And you are this one of the slowest Titans with the closest range weapons. Take any of the really big, long range maps like Homestead, for example. And Scorch just has a very difficult time doing anything because you can't trap people properly. North Stars, Ions, Tones, Mon Monarchs, anyone that has decent range will absolutely slaughter you. You will never get close enough unless you are just a god with your thermite cannon. And that's the thing where other close range titans, say Ronin for example, have their ways and weird maneuvers to get to someone quicker and a little bit safer. You are just a really big hulking man trying to run your way up to properly be able to take someone out. Can you block stuff with Inferno Shield? Sure. Can you create decent choke points with your gas? Sure. Is it easy? No. You're not playing an FPS game. You're playing a sheep herding game. Between your firewall slam and your gases, your inferno shield to block stuff or do damage, and your thermite cannon. Plus, of course, you do have the flame core, which is a damn powerful ability, but it's not quite enough to deal with those higher class titans on maps that favor them. So Scorch is the worst titan in Titanfall. Is it a bad titan? Absolutely not. And depending on the map, it might be a much better titan. But for a large majority of the time, equal skill players with other titans will be able to take you out unless you are just a damn, damn solid Scorch player. <laughs> Legion is when you don't want to pilot a Titan. It's when you want to pilot the Predator Cannon with Legion attachment. Legion goes in the bottom of beats here, which is ironic because often whenever a Scorch arrives in your face as a Legion player, you just lay down and die. Legion has one job to shoot you. Legion has a shield to shoot you safer. Legion has two different modes, close and long range shooting. And Legion even has a powered shot to increase the power of his shooting. And a smart core, because why even have to aim when I wanna shoot you? Legion players are playing gun. They love playing gun. They are gun. And there are no three words in the English dictionary that makes them more erect than aggressive sustained counterfire. What makes Legion just barely above Scorch? Well, he's a little chunk and a little Little slow, but mainly it's because Legion against other Titans does not have a lot of answers to deal with their variety of abilities. Legion can't really handle North Star because North Star is able to constantly dip in and out. Legion can't really handle Ion because Ion has a vortex shield. Tone has a particle wall. Monarch can just constantly shield sap and fire when your bulwark shield is down. Can Legion do very well and act extremely effective? Absolutely. With the right range and the right positioning, a good bulwark shield that's saved at the right time and a smart core, you can easily rinse three Titans from existence. But they kind of have to let you. Between all the defensive abilities and the enemy's swift movement and your lack of movement, it can be a little difficult to have the stars align and create that perfect scenario where Legion can just tear ass across the map. Certain maps, in fact, specifically the maps that Scorch is bad in, are the maps where Legion shines. Legion is able to get from a really far distance and do pretty significant damage, and when it's time to deal with lots of enemies, well, that's what the smart core is for. The reason he drops below is because Legion, at the end of the day, is very simple. He has big ass gun and he likes to shoot you with it. But he doesn't have the flexibility to handle other reprisals. Ion's Vortex, Tone's Particle Wall, there are many things that can actually cause Legion large amounts of problems. However, if Legion's in the right spot and is able to get a good bead, oh, health bars will be shredded. And that's where Legion really shines. But even so, it doesn't necessarily make him one of the best Titans in the game. So he goes at the bottom of B tier, even though Legion mains are some pretty chill folk. You hear that ringing in your ears, son? 
Well, 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 look what we have here. You can imagine my excitement as a North Star main, seeing all the crazy additions going into Apex, because North Star is indeed my baby. North Star is a Strider class Titan, which allows its chassis to be very, very nimble, yet teeny tiny in the health bar. Even though she's my favorite Titan, North Star belongs in the B tier slightly above Legion for a couple of reasons. Now in terms of damage, she is no slouch. That railgun does enormous damage when fully charged up. She's got fantastic range. The cluster missile is surprisingly good at not only getting rid of people in an area as well as dealing with pilots. She has a tether trap to keep people in place. Of course, let's not forget the VTOL hover, which is a little bit of a detriment. We'll talk about that in a moment, but it is useful to getting over for corners to shoot people and flight core can do a lot of damage. However, the problem with North Star is that North Star, in a sense, their kit does not mesh very well. North Star is a sniper. It is the sniper titan. And the best way to play North Star, the times when I know a North Star main is a true North Star main, is when I barely ever see the bastard. A good North Star player has a pixel, maybe even two pixels if you're lucky, poking out of cover with a gigantic fuck off right railgun aimed in your face, you suddenly wonder where the hell a fourth of your health just went, and you look to go see that person that shot you, and they're not there, because as soon as they fire, they dip. They shoot, and they dip. They shoot, and they dip. They move, they shoot, they fly over, and they dip right back down. And a good North Star is so good at utilizing the map and the cover in order to constantly keep those railgun shots in your face without any reprisal. And hey, maybe you do try to stop them. Maybe you do try to get that North Star. Well, there's a tether trap on your foot and now there's a cluster rocket on your ass and I've got three dashes and I'm fucking long gone. The issue is that North Star's kit really doesn't work out too well in terms of fleshing itself out. Flight Core in a sense makes them extremely exposed as the most squishy titan in the game along with Ronin and also the VTOL hover does the exact same and can't be cancelled which is probably the biggest detriment and one of the main things holding back North Star is VTOL hover keeps you in there and there is nothing you can do about it. When you're up there, you're stuck. And if someone gets a beat on you, you're going to have a bad time. Whereas being able to pop up, take your shot and pop down would be significantly better for the class. The flight core as well is very close range. And as I mentioned, a very short hell Titan and things like the tether trap can be helpful, but don't really take a whole lot to be dealt with. It's not to say that North Star isn't fun. Oh my God, North Star is so much fun. The sheer enjoyment of seeing a Doom Titan get one shot by a fully charged plasma railgun never gets old. Watching his health bars chunk and chunk in big fights when multiple enemies are fighting multiple allies and you're in the far back just taking pot shots and the entire enemy team is just whittling in health because oh my God, does that gun do a lot of damage. Combine that with the cluster missiles, which killing pilots is always really enjoyable and the fact that while it's not insanely accurate and does have travel time, being able to shoot pilots with North Star's railgun is certainly possible. The Titan can be pretty terrifying, especially with certain upgrades. But even so, it is still very squishy. The kit is a little bit weird, and if a Ronin or a Scorch gets on your ass and you're out of dashes and or you're just not prepared for them, life's going to get really bad. A North Star out in the open is a North Star about to be in a coffin. Using different kinds of cover, dipping in and out between it is the best way to play North Star. If you can master that, you will be the bane of everyone's existence. But until then, top of B tier is where North Star goes. Yo! Ronin is entirely a titan that depends on the player playing him. Now, Ronin I am putting on the bottom of A tier because Ronin has the lowest of lows by far, but Ronin can also have the highest of highs. I suck with Ronin. Ronin is my least favorite titan because I just can't seem to play him for the life of me. But when I see an enemy Ronin that knows what they're doing, oh my god, my life is forfeit. See, I can't do the Ronin things. I can't block right. I can't phase at the right times or know when to reload my lead wall or get, get my arc wave using properly or, or doing the sword core right. I can't, I can't Ronin. I just can't. I will admit that when I do play Ronin, sometimes it's fun to run around and just slice pilots out of the air. And it's never ever a bad time doing that slice where you get to sweep four grunts or specters out of the ground. That's all pretty enjoyable, sure. But I can't Ronin properly. Other people can Ronin properly. And when other people Ronin right, 
they are absolute menaces. There are very few things that can stop them because they've got a tool for almost everything and they know exactly when to use it. The lead wall shotgun does way more damage than you ever expect it will because whenever I use it, it feels weak. But then when I get hit by it, I'm like, oh my God, the lead wall. The sword, of course, does plenty of damage. The arc wave for disorientation, the phase shift to get out of different areas and the sword block, which is very, very strong, especially with sword core, to be able to take the brunt of almost an entire core sometimes and still live is rather impressive. Ronin can be very, very annoying. Many people hate fighting Ronin, which I can't be that mad about it. Like, yeah, is fighting Ronin annoying? Sure, they, they dip dive, they're slippery and annoying. But even so, I have to respect a good Ronin player because good Ronin players are rare. And at the end of the day, I know that they practice it because when you fight someone who doesn't know how to play Ronin properly, oh, you can tell. You can tell easily because they just get mulched by you if you're at any, any skill level with a different kind of pilot or titan. But I have to respect that Ronin gameplay. I have to respect the power of being able to constantly dodge and dip and use the power and the strength of this titan to their advantage. The Ronin player is able to dip and dive using the proper close range power. And that close range power therefore allows the Ronin to be good against almost every titan. Ironically, a little bit less with Scorch. Sometimes you can deal with Scorch, but Scorch can sometimes get you really hard at close range and cause you some problems. But Ronin has no counter. Counter. Ronin in their own right, being good enough, will be able to deal with any other Titan. In fact, I kind of like seeing good Ronins on my team because whenever I fight an annoying tone, the Ronin can just fly right in there and get behind the particle wall and cause all kinds of issues. Are the memes about them being weebs, stealing executions, constant nuke eject true? Yeah, yeah they are. It doesn't make them any less skilled. So long as the Ronin player has the skill, Ronin is a clear A tier Titan. So pick him up. You're gonna suck, but put the reps in, and oh yeah, he'll be really good. Smell like bitch in here, Oh, y'all smell like bitch to me. Oh boy, here we go. It's time to talk about Tone. Tone is arguably the most frustrating Titan in the entire game, and the one that is the most hated. Uh, definitely by me, at least. Some people think Ronin, but honestly, I think Tone easily takes the cake for being the most aggravating Titan to fight against. Tone is A tier, top of A tier, and there are still two Titans that are better than her. But even so, it doesn't matter because just being better doesn't mean that she's any less aggravating. Tone is the reason I take Zoloft. Now, all in all, Tone is a very strong Titan. Her 40 millimeter cannon is pretty good, does decent damage, and can snipe pilots to a, a relative degree of success. Her little sonar pulse is nice and helpful, but the main things that are really powerful about Tone are the wall, the missiles, and the salvo core. Now, the wall is the big one, the particle wall, a gigantic one-way wall that allows Tone, and not to mention how damn wide that thing is, that allows Tone to fire from relative safely without the need of actually being in cover. Requiring a decent map position or map advantage or map knowledge is not needed when you're playing Tone, because anywhere you are in the map, you can throw up a one-way wall, and if, especially if you have the reinforced particle wall, it is nigh impossible to destroy that thing before Tone does way more damage to you. Combine that with the fact that three shots or two shots in a scan on an enemy Titan will fire a large slew of missiles out of their shoulder rocket cannon, and that thing can also be arced to go over cover and around corners. But then of course you got Salvo Core, which might be the most powerful core in the entire game, that allows you to basically 100 to 0 almost any Titan chassis, just with a press of a button rather, rather easily. And even you can hold it up in the air and move it around to make it even easier. I don't hate Tone because they're Good, I hate Tone because they're annoying. Because at any point in time, a giant particle wall comes up and I have to play Tone's game. I am not the one who gets to dictate a fight, with the exception of Ronin, which is why I think Ronin is pretty nice into Tone. However, because of the way Tone works, because of the particle wall, and because of the way the missiles and the sonar and everything, I have to be the one that flees. When Tone puts up a particle wall, I have to go away and wait the wall out. And that's just annoying because I don't get to fight. I have to wait. And if I do attempt to fight, well, Tone is just going to absolutely slap me. Their gun has great range. Their missiles do tons of damage. And every shot they land on me is more opportunity for a salvo core to immediately one shot me. Tone is also really good into some of the lower level Titans like North Star as well as Legion. Now, if you're using North Star properly and hiding behind cover, it's less bad. But that giant particle wall is just impossible to get through. And that railgun won't do anything 
to it. Whereas Legion is just all gun. There is literally nothing you can do when there's a huge wall in your way. And oh my god, is it easy for Tone to fire at Legion, that gigantic hunky boy. Now, if you like missiles and everything, if you like just that kind of vibe with Tone, go ahead and play Tone. It's one of those things where is every person who plays Tone an asshole? Of course not, of course not. But a lot of assholes gravitate towards Tone. It's like Wraith in Apex. The Titan can be fun. If you like firing lots of missiles, you like that big tracker cannon, which I gotta admit that 40 millimeter is really, really cool. And if you just enjoy being able to fire a, a, a slew, a water wave of missiles, okay, totally cool. Just understand the crowd you're running with. It's a good Titan, it's not the best, it's a good Titan and it has the highest level in A tier, which stands for annoyance. Monarch was added as a DLC to Titanfall 2, and to the surprise of many people, myself included, it was an absolutely outstanding Titan. Monarch is our first S tier Titan, and by God, does it earn that title. In fact, I'd say that Monarch might actually fluctuate a little bit because Monarch doesn't work like the normal Titan. Monarch has three abilities, more like two and a half abilities, to be honest. They have an energy siphon ability to get shields. They've got a little bit of a missile launcher. That's okay damage, and they have a rearm to allow you to use them both again. Again, the thing about Monarch is that unlike all the other Titans, Monarch isn't about either burst damage and insane ranges, close range, something like that. Monarch is a pretty basic Titan, a pretty basic gun. The gun is pretty good, just about great at all ranges, good anti-pilot, but Monarch is about sustaining themselves. Monarch is about keeping themselves alive over and over. The ability to steal batteries from people through executions, the energy siphon. Monarch is about surviving as long as they can to upgrade their cores. Because unlike all the other titans that have cores that just one shot or get close to other titans, Monarch upgrades themselves higher and higher through different upgrades that you get to set before the game. These upgrades can be anything. Doubling the amount of missiles coming out of your back. Uh, perhaps arc rounds for your rifle. Uh, the longer ones have increased fire rate and damage for your rifle or a superior chassis turning you into an ogre class titan faster rearm more powerful electric smoke all these kinds of abilities but when monarch first drops it's like a a tier titan a minus maybe monarch with the full upgrades is the best titan in the game better than ion which i currently think is the best titan in the game we'll talk about them in a moment but with all the upgrades, superior chassis, uh, arc rounds or missiles, extra rearm or smoke, doesn't matter, point being, that is the strongest Titan in the game. Because, wow, a fully upgraded Monarch is insane. The problem is that, for me at least, Monarch tends to feel a little bit boring because of that. Because Monarch requires such a long sustain, you have to kind of play a little cagey with her in the beginning to get your ramping up going. I think I play Legion a lot more as opposed to Monarch because I enjoy that long gun and just I'm gonna fire a gun and laugh kind of feeling. However, Monarch does feel like I need to be a lot more cagey and a lot more waiting on enemy players to make mistakes or get in my line of sight so I can charge my cores up. Not to say that Monarch is bad on its own. Oh god, no. Monarch can do plenty by itself. But Monarch is definitely about working your way up to that final core, getting whatever god knows what benefit that you get from it, and then just slaughtering everybody from there. All the abilities are very good. The upgrades are strong. The gun is great at anti-pilot. And overall, it's a very consistent and strong Titan with an Atlas chassis to boot. Even with all that being said though, not quite for me, but there's a lot of people who really, really like Monarch. And at least she requires a bit more skill to play than Tone does. Finally, we have what I'd argue is the strongest Titan in the game, and that's good old Ion. Ion, however, is also one of the easier Titans to learn. Uh, I'd say that Ion probably has one of the best skill floors. You know, it's very easy to pick up. They're understandable. Their abilities aren't too hard to figure out. However, put enough practice, have enough skill, and really understand Ion and energy management, and I'd argue that they are by far the best Titan in the entire game. The weapon itself, the splitter rifle, is it's okay. It's not that great at anti-pilot, it's okay, and it's just all right against anti-Titan. But the reason Ion is so dang strong isn't just the weapon, the tactical or anything, but the overall flexibility of the Titan. There are many things that a Titan has to do well in order to be a good Titan. One of them is burst damage, the other one is sustained damage, the third one is anti-pilot, and the fourth one is anti-titan in terms of like dealing with their stuff, defensive abilities. All these things 
Ion has perfectly well. Where the splitter rifle may not be fantastic against anti-pilot, the laser shot absolutely is. Where the burst damage does not come from the splitter rifle, the laser core 100% will slaughter a titan, so similarly to the salvo core. The vortex shield is incredibly good at stopping almost any titan, because most titans use abilities in terms of like bullet based, whether they're bullets or rockets or whatever, which is ironic considering the fact that the best counter to Ion would be Ion, because the splitter rifle doesn't have actual bullets. And there's even a tripwire trap to, you know, cover an advantage or something. And a good way to kill pilots, ironically. They run into that thing a lot. But there's never a point in which Ion will ever find themselves lacking for a situation. The splitter rifle is consistent damage. Even if it's not ton, it is still consistent damage. And if you want to dip into your energy pools, the spread version does quite a bit of damage. And the five-way spread ability does actually insane damage. I was very surprised that it melted that fast. The laser shot does actually kind of enormous damage, especially if you hit a crit. Almost the same as I think a North Star's fully powered railgun, which is kind of ridiculous to me and maybe is a little too much, but it's also fan fantastic at sniping pilots, whether they're running through the map or goosing from a titan. The tripwire, as mentioned, is a good way to at least slow somebody down or, you know, possibly get extra damage as they're running away. And the vortex shield is easily the most pliable thing in the entire game. It completely nullifies a large amount of enemy titan's power. Monarch, Legion especially, as well as even things like Tone, really can't do much when you have a vortex shield up just because you can catch everything they have and send it right back at them. And in the case of more bullet base titan specifically legion and monarch that refraction damage is really high the problem is that all of these things share energy one single energy meter and if you go too hard in one of them you won't have enough for everything else you constantly are using laser shot to take out pilots you've got no energy and there's a legion behind you ready to eat your ass you've got anyone like a ronin perhaps like barreling down on you you don't have any energy from a tripwire because you spent your entire time firing the splitter rifle now you've got no energy and an Allegiant shield is just down and you don't have the power to use the upgrade splitter rifle and instead you're stuck with just a little pew 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 because you wasted it all on the vortex shield. Every decision made as Ion is counterbalanced by every single decision not made as Ion. Being able to manage your energy, manage your abilities, because they all pull from the same energy tab is really important and that is the true sign of skill as Ion. Is being great at aiming with your laser shot important? Absolutely. Is knowing when to fire your splitter rifle and being able to aim that thing well as well? Sure. Is vortex shooting the right stuff and knowing the angles? All that stuff is good. Yes, yes, the first person shooter stuff is important. But managing energy, that's the real skill. Ion's lows are not that low. Ion can do well, even if you, you know, are blowing through your stuff really quick. But Ion's highs, there'll be never a way to deal with her. She will always have something for you. You constantly assume that the Vortex Shield is out because they were using this, this, or that, but then there she goes. You fire a power shot with Legion and just... And then you're fucked. Ion is a perfect example of easy to learn, hard to master, and incredibly rewarding when you do. If you want a Titan that is not only Jack of all trades, but... I mean, Jack of all trades normally means like, okay at everything, but being absolutely incredible king of all trades, well, that's generally the Ion game. If you haven't picked up Titanfall 2 yet, please do. I plan on making a full review for that game probably sometime in June. It was one of my promises for a charity stream, so I'll be getting that up as soon as possible. And overall, I am more than happy to see as many of you playing the game. I just reached, I think, Gen 11 very recently, and I'm feeling pretty good about my progress. I love this game. I'm not as high as everyone else is, but, you know, I still love playing it. I have a blast. And overall, I should like really do hope you all, too. So, with that being said, I want to thank all of my patrons and members very much for supporting me. Let me answer a couple of your questions. What type of food would you recommend for people who want to explore their taste? It's a very a little strange question, but in terms of like exploring your taste, I think it's always important to try food that's from different cultures, specifically the cultures that maybe reside in your area. For instance, if I live in California, I have a wealth of Mexican and different kinds of Asian food because of well, location of the border, Angel Island immigration, long history of it. There's many, many reasons why. Point being is that I don't think if I lived anywhere else in the country, besides maybe, I don't know, New York or something, that I would have this wealth of things like pho, sushi, and all different kinds of Mexican and Spanish cuisine. So being able to 
try out things that are not your norm and trying out like those hole in the wall places that are really authentic. There's, there's no, the best Mexican restaurants in the world aren't the ones that are like hoity toity. They're, it's called just Alberto's or Roberto's and it's in the middle of the back alley somewhere. Those are the best goddamn restaurants on the planet. What content do you enjoy creating the most? Be it certain types of videos or YouTube versus streaming? That's difficult. I think I like making YouTube more because I feel like the end product I get a lot more proud of from the video that I make. Uh, but of course, streaming is a little bit nicer when I'm having really off days or I'm really tired and I just kind of want to do this and not have to worry about editing. It depends. When talking about movies slash series slash film in general, what are some key aspects that immediately show you if it's good or bad? Exposition. How much do they tell me? Just through words not through use of uh, environment or uh, leaving bread trails around, uh, bread, bread trails, uh, bread trails and crumbs, crumbs from bread, whatever. Um, any kind of exposition I hate, which is one of the reasons why I don't like anime because they over exposition everything. They don't trust their audience to understand what's going on by just showing it to them. It's one of the reasons why my favorite movie of all time or one of my like favorite movies is No Country for Old Men. They keep very, very small amount of detail Details actually in the movie unless you figure a lot of it out yourself and trusting the audience which is extremely nice and it feels uh, mature instead of being like oh my god I'm so sick of going to this job I hate with that co-worker I don't like and it's a Sunday I love going to the bar on Sundays normally like that kind of exposition I hate it I absolutely hate it show don't tell is important Okay, I will see you in 10 days on May the 20th for the next and second part of the Apex Legends in Explained videos. Bye-bye.